Gardner's case in court tomorrow. The family of a St. Louis teen killed for witnessing another murder claims prosecutors from her office mishandled their son's case and now they're suing. Investigators believe the murder was planned inside the city jail. News 4 investigates Susan L. Corey exposes records the city doesn't want you to see. Okay, what happened? I don't know. My son just came outside to catch the school bus. Uh -huh. Somebody ended up shooting him. We heard about eight shots. James Scales Jr.'s murder is anything but a straightforward case. My child is gone now. When you could have prevented it. On September 5th, 2017, 17-year-old James was shot at the bus stop outside his North City home. Police and prosecutors believe the shooting was meant to silence James, the sole witness to another murder. They were supposed to keep him safe. That's what they said. James's parents claim his death marked a series of failures by the St. Louis Circuit Attorney's Office. They say James didn't receive witness protection, something he's entitled to under Missouri law and the prosecutor's office overseas. They have to be held accountable. Now they're suing several city employees, including Circuit Attorney Kim Gardner. We heard some of Andrea McNary is one story. of the family's lawyers. I think it's very disappointing that, you know, nobody took the opportunity to learn from his death. The Missouri Attorney General recently filed to remove Gardner from office. McNary says she wonders where the outcry was in the six years since James's murder. What are the circumstances where someone will say there's a problem here? James's case dates back to 2016. The day after Christmas, he saw his best friend, Dwayne Clinton, get shot and killed. His family says he came forward thinking his name and identity would be protected. James told police and prosecutors Keith Graham pulled the trigger. Graham was arrested. James was supposed to testify against him. Over the next year, James's family claims he dealt with threats and someone even shot up their home. It really is at every turn you see these opportunities where it could have been corrected, it could have been righted, and it just wasn't. After James died, investigators learned the plot to kill him was hatched inside the city justice center on recorded phone calls. The case went to trial, but no one was convicted of James's murder. His parents blamed that on prosecutors. I heard them on the tapes, the perpetrators from the jail saying what they was going to do. I just don't understand. Prosecutors claim while Graham was in jail, he called friends planning how to hunt down and kill James. Those friends are William Pearson Jr., Therese Cook, and Davion Gordon. All three were arrested and charged in James's murder. While their calls with Graham are public records, the circuit attorney's office doesn't want you to hear them and won't release them. Reporting by News 4 Investigates shared some of the calls we found, including one where prosecutors say Graham asked Gordon for help getting out. You rush, they gonna look like, oh, he orchestrated something to come up out of that. Right now, most likely your phone call is being recorded, bro. I know. So all they need is a witness, and I'm, huh? I'm dead, huh? Yeah. I'm dead, dead. There are dozens of what prosecutors believe are planning calls. <laughs> then on the day James was murdered, investigators say Graham talked to Gordon, who they say acknowledged the plan worked. This no come on home, man. Other evidence includes cell phone records putting Pearson and Cook in the immediate area when James was killed. The case went to trial in April 2022, more than four years after James died. The judge found prosecutors didn't provide defense lawyers with all of the evidence, so those records couldn't be used. The judge also let the defense tell the jury there may be evidence that could clear their clients' names. The jury didn't find anyone guilty of murder, but they did believe Graham was involved in James's death and convicted him on two lesser felonies. The facts of James's case are, I'm surprised more people don't talk about it. The circuit attorney's office claims they can't talk about the case because of the family's lawsuit. I Kimberly am Gardner. Gardner has long said protecting witnesses is a priority, including when she was sworn in almost seven years ago. We're not tolerating violent crime. That has to stop. 
You know, we are people preying on our communities, preying on victims and witnesses. In recent court filings, Gardner responded to the attorney general's attempt to remove her from office. She blamed her employees, saying there have been unfortunate failures by subordinates. The buck stops with the circuit attorney and the elected prosecutor ultimately is responsible. St. Louis yeah, University law professor Dr. Anders Walker says Gardner runs the office and management falls on her. Maybe out of this whole thing we will get some insight into what the office was like. Was it being managed? Was it not being managed? Was anyone flying the plane? The Scales family is suing Gardner personally since Missouri immunity laws protect her work on the job. They say they want James's life to make a difference. At any point, have you seen the circuit attorney's office say we are going to make changes? Not once. Nobody has taken any responsibility at all. This claim of prosecutors not providing defense lawyers with all the evidence is something we've reported on in multiple cases. It's also mentioned by the attorney general as one of the reasons he doesn't believe Gardner should keep her job. Gardner's defense in the Scales lawsuit is being paid for by you, the taxpayer. The latest record we got shows her legal costs are currently over $40,000. We'll, of course, be following what happens in this case. Susan Elcorey, News 4 Investigates.